This screencast is on the money market. When you're watching this screencast, you'll hopefully be able to understand why the money demand curve is downward sloping. You'll also recognize that nominal interest rate is used when discussing the money market. And you'll be able to define what holding money means as we go through the screencast. The money market graph is really important for AP Macro. Um, and so just taking a moment here to look at a few things. You have on the horizontal axis the quantity of money. On the vertical axis, you have the nominal interest rate, which is labeled with a lowercase i. You have a downward sloping money demand curve. And you have a vertical money supply curve. And so when we talk about this nominal interest rate, right, it's not adjusted for inflation. Um, a way to look at it is that it's the price of money. The higher that the nominal interest rate is, it means it's more expensive for consumers to be able to um, take out money, but also you get a greater return if you keep it in the bank. And so as a result then, you have a lower quantity of money that is demanded. Now, the lower the nominal interest rate is, the less incentive it is to keep it in the bank. And so you'll have people who will hold money or who will utilize that money. And so the quantity demanded of money will go up. So when we talk about the money demand curve being downward sloping, it's based upon how people hold money. And there's really two ways that people hold money. It's either in their checking account or it's money that they have on them that they're going to spend. The both ways that I'm explaining this, this is very liquid with the money and being able to use it. And so we're talking here about M1 money when we're talking about the money demand curve. There's three reasons why the money demand curve looks like it does. And so you want to be able to take a look at those and recognize how they connect with the motives that people have for holding money or, again, being able to spend money. The first one, I think, is the one that's utilized the most on AP exams, and that's the tr transaction demand. And this is all about consumers and them making purchases. And they, they might increase their money demand as their income goes up because they'll be able to uh, consume more. Their things might become more expensive that change in the aggregate price level. And as a result, then, they're going to need more money to be able to buy more things. Um, and change in real GDP and technology also go along with that, an increase in the final goods and services means that more money is being spent. Another reason is the precautionary or liquidity demand. This is basically that protection for the unexpected. Unexpected things come up and so people need to have money to be able to pay for those things. It could be unexpected transactions that people want to make in the market or it could be emergencies and things that people hadn't really accounted for before but you still have that money on hand so that you're able to do that. The third reason is for speculative demand. And this is about serving as a store of wealth because you might want to have future financial opportunities with different institutions or different ways of spending. And so as a result, then, you need that money to be on demand. But these are the three reasons why the money demand curve looks like it does. So going back to this inverse relationship here, between the quantity of money demanded and the nominal interest rate. When we're talking about the money, we're talking about M1 and how the liquidity within it allows people to be able to utilize it right away. When, remember, when we're talking about nominal interest rate, we're talking about interest rate before inflation. And again, the nominal interest rate, that interest that you could uh, get off of it if you had put it in the bank, the opportunity cost of holding the money or not investing it in some way. So when we talk about holding money, this is when you're either keeping it in your pocket or you've got it in your checking account, checking deposit. The opportunity cost of holding money is you not putting into different financial assets. In macro, you will be expected to know the different financial assets, stocks, bonds, 
loans, and bank deposits. These are all different areas that somebody could put their money instead of putting it, uh, or instead of holding on to it or keeping it. Just like we've talked about before with the downward sloping money demand curve, there are things that not only make it look the way it does, but other things that will cause the money demand curve to shift. One of them would be an increase in the price level. Um, this leads to an increase in the amount of money that people are going to need in order to be able to purchase goods. A person's income will shift the money demand curve. And then you also have technology. And with technology, we're talking about technology with financial institutions. One example could be having easier access to that M1. You've got your ATMs and you've got your debit cards. That would increase the money demand curve. Another thing that would um, decrease the money demand curve would be the increased use of credit cards because that one then doesn't necessarily require that M1 to be held by people um, more often. When we talk about an increase in the money demand curve, it's like we've always done before with the shift to the right. Um, this shift to the right you see here will increase the nominal interest rate. The quantity of money, the money supply, which is controlled by the Fed, that stays the same. So the only thing that adjusts is the nominal interest rate. And we're not uh, going to get into the um, money supply right now with regard to the Fed, but just like with the money demand curve, you have the three reasons why are the three tools of the Fed that cause it to be vertical when we're talking about the money supply curve.